Approximately 2 to 11% of the population experience same sex attractions. But do we know why? Was it determined at birth or was it because of the Buzz Lightyear movie and that one kissing scene is changing someone's preferences? The first thing we should probably discuss is genetics. Is there a genetic component to sexual orientation? In a study looking at almost 500,000 people, scientists found five genetic markers associated with people that had sexual intercourse with someone of the same sex. One of those markers was found in a location with genes related to sex hormones, while another marker was in an area with genes related to smell, which are likely to be involved in sexual attraction. However, none of these genes could by itself predict the sexuality of someone. The gay gene doesn't exist. Instead, many genes are likely involved, each having a small effect on sexual behavior. It is estimated that genetics may explain up to 25% of same-sex behavior. We also have hormones like estrogen and testosterone that affect the sexual differentiation of the brain during prenatal development. The sexual differentiation of the brain starts during the second half of pregnancy, while genital sex differentiation occurs in the first two months of pregnancy. They occur at different times, so these processes may be influenced independently. Depending on the hormonal and expressed gene levels during the sexual differentiation of the brain, the masculinization of the genitals may not represent the degree of masculinization of the brain, which is very interesting. Besides genes and the hormonal environment directing the development of the brain, the mother's immune system may also affect sexual orientation. At least that is the leading hypothesis explaining why men with a greater number of older brothers are more likely to come out as gay. This phenomenon is dubbed the fraternal birth order effect, and it has been replicated worldwide. What seems to be happening is that the mom's immune system reacts to proteins produced by the male fetus entering her bloodstream. As a result, the mother creates antibodies that will neutralize these proteins and may influence the neurodevelopment of the fetus. With each subsequent boy pregnancy, more antibodies against these proteins accumulate. Interestingly, a new study found that women are also more likely to enter same-sex unions if they have more older brothers. We know of several brain differences between heterosexual and homosexual people. For example, homosexual men have a smaller third interstitial nucleus of the anterior hypothalamus than heterosexual men. This brain region is involved in males' typical sex behavior, including feeling attracted to females. And it's not only that certain brain parts have different sizes. Many brain regions in homosexual men resemble those in heterosexual women, and lesbian brains resemble the brains of heterosexual men. In one study, straight men and gay women strongly activated the brain reward circuitry when looking at female faces. The same reward circuitry activated when gay men and straight women look at male faces. And brain differences go beyond sexual behavior. The amygdala wiring in gay men, similar to straight women, is connected to parts of the brain influencing moods, while in straight men and lesbians, the amygdala is connected to parts of the brain involved with the fight-or-flight response. While we have been discussing the biology of sexual orientation, the social environment does interact with our biological predispositions. In a longitudinal study of lesbian families, having a childhood family environment characterized by openness and acceptance of queer relationships made one more likely to explore same-sex relationships. Also, children who do not conform to heteronormative gender identities and adults whose attitudes are more supportive of free expression of sexuality are more likely to come out as queer. These studies are more related to the openness and exploration of sexual orientation rather than impacting the development of sexual orientation. If we're talking about the social environment affecting someone's sexual orientation, there is no strong evidence up to this date. Sexual orientation development will continue to be a complex topic. But one thing's for sure, 
we need to stop looking at it through a black and white lens. Because it's actually a rainbow. Ugh, that's a very cringy line. What I'm trying to say is that sexual orientation is a complex topic, and this is reflected in the brain differences and spectrum of sexual preferences people have.